All right, how's it going, guys? Today is, uh, let's see, the first was uh, Saturday, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today's got to be June 5th, I'm supposing. Uh, I know it's been a while since we did a update on the greenhouse rebuild. Um, we've made a lot of progress, actually. Uh, it looks like we're going to start installing the roof panels um, mid-July. So... We're really trying to get things buckled up here. Um, I'll show you what we've been working on. I don't know if you remember, we were, I don't have my headphones in today. So I'm sorry if the sound quality is pissy, but um, if you remember, we were doing these uh, folded steel ribs and we were uh, riveting them, the two ribs together to make one long rib. Uh, so you can see the rivets there, 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 and there, and there, and there. And this is where the second one goes, and they're doubled up on the bottom here. So they kind of overlap. Gives them a little bit of extra rigidity, you know, so they're not going to fold. I just did that. Okay, anyway. Um... So if you see the gutter line, we've been working on this. What we've been doing is taking this uh, recycled lumber. This is all recycled plastic right here. And I'm sorry if the glare is really... It's a uh, recycled plastic 2x4. And we're using that because it's going to be weatherproof. Um, so any rain or moisture that should uh, infiltrate into the greenhouse uh, will be controlled and it won't rot the wood because um, this is plastic, 100% plastic. So it's all like an extruded, uh, it's made for landscaping. They've got some higher higher strength stuff, but this is just basically a furring strip for us to attach uh, the plastic and the tracks to, so at, at the gutter line. So normally, I mean, there was holes pre-drilled into the gutter line here where the old clips were. So we just enlarged those holes a little bit. We're using concrete, I'm sorry, uh, stainless steel sidewalk bolts and they've got like this enlarged head I might have some here this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video just because I got a lot of stuff to catch up on but there we go this is a stainless steel sidewalk bolt I think I showed you those last time but what we're doing is we're going through the gutter and then through the, the wood or through the plastic lumber and then we're fastening it on with nylon lock nuts. Um, but where these brackets are, we've had to route these channels, which is a super big pain in the butt. Um, there is some aluminum, tiny, you know, small aluminum chunks and aluminum shavings in there, um, which using a high high speed steel uh, router bit um, it's dulling it pretty quick uh, I, I would spend the money on carbide tipped uh, router bits but I don't know we don't have much left I think I can get by with another uh, high speed stainless steel we're using a um, I was using just a regular wing cutter um, and then doing like the fine detail work with uh, um, another quarter inch wing cutter it's using a half inch then a quarter inch Right now, I'm just using a quarter inch uh, spiral upcut bit. They're generally made for um, like CNC routing, but uh, this works fine in a hand router. I'm actually, I was using a, a big big router and then a, then a, a smaller hand router, uh, trim router. Right now, I'm just using that stainless, or that um, high speed steel spiral upcut router bit to route these channels in. Um, it cuts a lot cleaner and a lot faster. Um, and it doesn't seem to dull as fast as the wing cutters do because it's kind of like a shearing motion. So these aluminum chunks and these aluminum shavings that are embedded in the plastic, because it's recycled plastic, I mean, you know, they are not going to get everything out. It's not made for like machining. It was just made for like landscaping material. So you cut it once. It's not meant to like plane down like a regular board, although it has some cleaner stuff, but it's more expensive. We didn't really need to go that route. We didn't think the, the metal was going to be in there. Um, until we actually started milling it like regular lumber and then we found out 
Um, and at that point, it just came down to it. Do we send it back and go through this whole process and try to get new stuff, or do we just try to work with what we have? And we decided just to work with what we have. Um, darn nets. So anyway, every, every place there's this, these brackets. So all the way down, all the way down there, we've had to route out the backs of the lumber so that it would fit over the top of the brackets. So what I've been doing is, uh, this is the trim router, my trim router. It's a Bosch Colt, uh, one horse. Um, and that's the upcut spiral bit. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. Um, so it, it, it's tending to be a little bit more durable when we run across the, the aluminum shavings and aluminum chunks, because uh, it, it's not, the wings aren't slamming against the chunk and putting, you know, rolling over the, the sharpened edge or, uh, or putting nicks in the blades. This is more kind of a cutting, like trying to cut tin foil with the scissors. Um, so it's working so far. I mean, we've done, uh, from over there, all the way down to that end all that gutter line is done and then we've got all of this gutter line from that end all the way over to about there um, right now I've got to finish making some fine adjustments on the board that's hanging down there you see um, I've got to cut around, I've got to create a little channel around the, where the um, truss rises up. And then also, on this side, they've got these weird plates, these um, reinforcement plates on here. On this side. It's basically tying the two gutter pieces together with a little bit more strength. Um, so... But you see how the, the board is not, it's not proud, or I mean it's proud, it's not level with the uh, gutter. So I have to route the back out of here to kind of s about, you know, um, an inch and three eighths I believe is how deep I'm, or how far back I'm going and a half an inch deep. And this will just slide down over top of it. And I'll show you an example what I did over here. We gotta really clean this place up because it's really getting to be a pain in the butt to work around. So, that's, I don't know if you can see it, but we've got this channel routed out back here and it fits right over that plate. So it allows the board to come down so that the top of the board is level with the gutter line. I don't know if you can see that there. It's hard for me to, yeah. So you see how that's nice and level? And then there's the bracket where we've had to route around the bracket there. And then we had to route around that steel reinforcement plate. Um, this side is the pain in the butt side because the other side doesn't have that reinforcement plate. On this side, you've got one down there one there, one there, one we already did, and then further down, they're all, they're all along this side, wherever the gutter sections connect. So that's what's kind of slowing us down here. We're doing, you know, double, triple the routering um, compared to the other side. So Mike, the owner of the facility, I'll try to get some video of him working away. Um, I want to make sure that we, uh, we show him out here dripping in sweat and burning his head. <laughs> He's got to wear a hat. Uh, so uh, it doesn't burn the top of his head <laughs> um, but he's been he's been going along this gutter and what we're doing is we're drilling a pilot hole through the the original holes that are in the gutter and so we can kind of see where we need to drill through to line up the hole in the wood or the plastic with the hole in the gutter line and then so we drill a pilot hole from the back side with a right angle bit a right angle attachment on our drill uh, because the gutter's too narrow to actually fit the the drill in the gutter line we got to kind of drill up at an angle like that so the drills won't fit so we put a right angle uh, attachment on there with a with a short stub bit 
drill the pilot hole, come back to the outside with a quarter inch bit, um, a cobalt bit. We drill through the plastic, through that, that pilot hole that's been pushed through. And then we put a little oil on the bit and low and slow um, drill through the, the steel gutter just to open up that hole because right now the holes are 3 16 of an inch with threads in them. Our bolts are 1 quarter of an inch with thread. Um, so we just need to open up that hole a little bit so that these bolts can go then from the inside of the gutter line. So the heads on the inside of the gutter, these are actually going to be on the greenhouse inside as you can see. All those tails. Now if we want, we'll come back with a, um, a portable bandsaw with a, with a um, metal blade on it and just zip the tails off just so they're not getting caught on anything, but that's not a priority right now. Our priority is getting all this gutter line plastic up and attached all the way down here. Then, I just ordered uh, aluminum rivets today. I did a lot of research on rivets, called a specialty rivet company, and found aluminum rivets that were able to, um, they have their they have up to a 5 8 inch grip. That means they can compress up to 5 8 inches of material. And they're 3 16 inch in diameter. Um, standard head, protruding head. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that track that the fabric goes into. Um, we're going to pre-attach it to the ribs. And I have a piece inside which I can show you. But I'm going to save that for a different video when we actually get to that point. But we'll pre-attach the track to those ribs. And then we'll bolt the um, the whole assembly up onto the greenhouse. Like you can kind of see those ribs already bolted up there. Those are six feet on center. And what we're doing, because having them six feet on center is absolutely critical. Uh, if it's any shorter, any longer, uh, the fabric will either be too loose and just floppy in there, and you want it more like a trampoline, or it's going to be too tight and it won't pull up through the tracks. So. We're using story sticks where we have six foot on center. This bracket actually goes on one on the existing one that's bolted down, and then the bottom bracket goes on to the next one, and that holds it into position exactly six foot on center away from the other one. We clamp it down and then drill through, use these bolts to secure it to the C channels. Right there. Uh, right there and right there, and right there, and that'll be structurally sound, plus the track is going to be bolt, it's going to be bolted through along with the folded steel, there, 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 and there, but the track where it lays across the, the, the steel that it doesn't have any fastener on it, we're going to use um, 5 8 inch uh, aluminum rivets. These rivets are rated for a hundred, or I'm sorry, 450 pounds of tinsel strength. Tinsel means being able to pull it apart, how far it will, how much load it can take before it stretches and breaks. Uh, if you understand how rivets work, um, I'm not going to get into that. But uh, if we get any lufting of air up through the greenhouse, as it pushes on that plastic, it's going to want to lift that 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 plastic and the track off of that folded steel, and we don't want that to happen. Even though it's going to be bolted in four different places, we don't want it lifting in the middle here either. So we'll rivet that, that track on, and at 450 pounds, each rivet can hold the exact same amount as the uh, force that the plastic is designed to withstand. So um, it's been a lot of, you know, I've learned a lot of engineering uh, specs, and it's been a good experience so far. Um, it's nothing that I can't handle or can't figure out. Uh, it's actually forcing me to go into different areas that not, you haven't really had to pay attention to before um, and it's it's kind of interesting the things I'm learning and the things that, that I'm having to look at and take into consideration to make sure that this is done and done right the first time rather than you know having a storm come through and then blowing the whole roof section off and we're screwed um, and that's you know twenty thousand dollars or whatever we end up you know investing in this roof system it's not actually twenty thousand dollars but um, anyway I won't get into that uh, it's less, but so that's where we're at. Oh, and so yeah, we got all of our plastic tracking. Um, it came in uh, a couple days ago. That's all the plastic tracking that we need for the whole roof. And these big rolls are all of our greenhouse material, man. It's three foot in diameter 
by six foot long and that's big roll of this industrial bubble wrap as you can see here uh, there you go see that honeycomb looking thing that bubble wraps about that thick so that's what we're using now we did have these stored outside and some genius um, we didn't think anybody would mess with it I mean it's pretty obvious and they're about 300 pounds of roll so well some genius decided to see if he could if it was worth anything and he could steal it um, and they tore a hole in this one looks like they tried to cut it right there the plastic and then tore it open to see but this one they did cut and they put a nice slice in there so that sucks and there's Mike right there wave hi Mike <laughs> Mike's gonna be Mike's doing all the bolting and drilling and uh, putting all the lock nuts on so that's all his handiwork right there my handiwork's in the shed <laughs> all right we'll uh, catch you up more later